Joining us here on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line is the head coach of LSU football, coming off a huge win against Alabama over the weekend. He is Brian Kelly back here on the show. How are you, coach? Good, Rich. How you been? Well, I'm great, man. I'm uh, I'm the new offensive coordinator of the Indianapolis Colts, so I got to get going. You know, <laughs> your I mean, dream, your dream job is the offensive coordinator for Michigan. We know uh, that. that's true. That's true. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to mess with success, though. Um, yeah, true, true enough. So, uh, walk me through your fe- uh, uh, your feelings after that game. I, I saw you, uh, you. You know, you had you had tears in your eyes talking to ESPN, uh, and I could only imagine what was going through your mind. Can you uh, put it into words for me? Coach Kelly. Well, I mean, look, you make a, you know, a big move. You move your family. We've uh, been in the Midwest or the East Coast our whole life um, to move down to the South. I mean, it was a big move um, uh, in our career and in my wife and family to to come down here and to, um, you know, obviously, you know, move the program along. Um, to the level that that we did in, in a short period of time, and to you know beat the you know obviously the, the standard bearer of success in college football, Alabama, um, you can't help but be a little bit emotional. Um, I'd be lying if if uh, if I told you I wasn't. But um, you know it's early in our process in terms of what we're trying to do here. But I was so proud of my team and how they competed. Um, play in and play out. Um, I think all of that was part of the night. And the crowd's amazing. You know, sometimes, you know, hype doesn't come up and, you know, realize itself when, you know, you have all of this talk about the stadium and Tiger Stadium and Death Valley, but it lived up to it. The the environment was uh, amazing. So I think all of that probably, you know, led to that moment. And so um, when it came time in overtime to go for two, what went through your your lid on that one, Coach? I just don't think there was much to think about. I, I think that we had played uh, the game exactly the way I had asked the team to play it. Um, look, if they had kicked the field goal, we would have kicked the field goal. I mean, you know, it just lined up perfectly um, for that to be the call. Um, and, you know, Certainly, I, I was prepared to, to live with, with the consequences if, if we didn't. But I, I trusted my team and the way they were playing and felt that at that time that this was our opportunity to go win it. What's your heart like in your chest after you make a call like that and you're watching your kids um, go and execute the play? What, what is that like? I, I think you're, you're much more um, in control when – you know, you're con- convinced that regardless of the situation, you've made the right call given the circumstances. And and I was ready to deal with the the criticism that would have come with it because I think we've made so much progress and in such a very short period of time that um, I wasn't really concerned with, you know, if we did make it. So I, I think in those circumstances, it it really wasn't, you know, something that where you feel like, oh, my God, you know, my heart's ready to, to jump out of my chest. I was just hoping they executed well, and they did. I'm, I mean, and the kid who grabs the the uh, two-point conversion was the one who grabbed the touchdown in the back of the end zone. True uh, freshman. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, Mason Taylor, um, um, what did – I mean, what are you seeing in that kid? Uh, we we all know his upbringing and things of that nature. Right. What, what, well, he comes on campus unheralded out of St. Thomas Aquinas High School, which is a great high school. But he's 220 pounds. He puts on over 20 pounds since he gets here. He turns himself into, you know, one of the top freshman tight ends in the country. And he does it through hard work and, you know, just – immersing himself in in the day-to-day and for him to get this kind of success is just amazing to see and um you know again uh, he's out there with his mom and you know obviously he's got great pedigree but you still got to go make plays right i mean and and in the biggest moment um here's a young kid just 18 years old, stepping up and making plays in front of over 100,000 people pretty good story no i mean and for sure too and uh look i i i I I do have to bring it up, uh, Coach Kelly. I mean, the the video of you <laughs> dancing with a recruit that uh, you know a lot of people have talked about. Uh, that's a kid, Danny Lewis Jr., who who eventually chose Alabama 
and right. he's, and he's a tight end. Um, yep. And the kid who caught the the pass that we just mentioned and the two point conversion, a tight end. Uh, would he have even maybe even been out there had uh, the kid that was in that viral video with you had stayed at LSU, coach? Just goes to show how bad of a dancer I was. So, <laughs> I mean, is that what it is? Okay, it was, obviously he didn't like my dancing. So. <laughs> But who would think a guy from the Midwest who's originally from Boston could be anything but a good dancer? That's so, true. No, I know. I mean, really. I mean, what was I thinking? No, but, I know. I, and I know that, you know, we're talking about kids making decisions, and I don't want to put you in a position. But I, I, honestly, that's what I thought of uh, uh, when when uh, when that thing hit. Um, well, it's the same thing when I see you run the 40. <laughs> Not a boy. Okay. I walked into it. I led with my chin. I led with my chin. No question about that. No question about that. It is, it is fun. I mean, look, I mean, recruiting is, is such now that, you know, these kids ask you to do things. You're like, what are you going to say, no? I mean, no, I don't want to be that guy, right? So right. Uh, it's fun, and, and you try to accommodate these guys. And um, and then recruiting takes on, you know, whatever at that day um, is part of it, whether it's a photo shoot where mm-hmm. they want to do it, you know, at the stadium or – um, you know, in front of a backdrop of cars. It's it's just so different today. So you just try to you kind of roll with it the best you can. Brian Kelly, LSU Tiger, foot head football coach here on the Rich Eisen Show. And fascinatingly enough, I mean, as if the football gods can't wink uh, at, at folks enough um, w- with you having an opportunity with two losses to get into the, uh, to the final four, the p- college football playoffs. Uh, one of the teams in front of you knocked off by the man who succeeded you uh, and the program that you you left in Notre Dame that night and Clemson. Uh, I'm I'm wondering if that uh, didn't escape you in that regard as well. You know, I, I didn't. I was just happy that, that that Notre Dame beat Clemson, but I I didn't think of it really in those terms. To be quite honest with you, mm-hmm. I was just so focused on, you know, what we did and and how we did it, and and quite frankly. You know where we are and what we're trying to do here in terms of the development of our program. You know, thinking of playoffs just wasn't part of you know the thought process. We were really just trying to, you know, we were at 39 scholarships back in January. We're just trying to put a football team together that was competitive in the SEC. So um, our, our vision is is really just in front of us, and thinking in those terms has really not been anything that that we've even tried to even think about well i mean but you are on a path uh at this point to get in the sec championship game and potentially it looks like take on georgia and make a case right i mean absolutely is there a a table pound i I give you a table if you wish to pound it uh right now for your team in this regard no no doubt i mean look i mean there's so much football ahead of us right we've Mm -hmm. got two teams in the sec that we have to play on the road and we've got a home game one home game left but there's 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 certainly a path there um and but a lot of work right you got to beat another top you know we've beaten two top 10 teams but we've got to beat the number one team in the country if we're fortunate enough to even get there so um look i mean there's a lot there but you know there'll be a resume that will stand up um if if in fact you could get to that level so we just we got to go up to Arkansas and and beat a team that is is very hungry after um, losing to Liberty. So uh, that's really been our focus this week. And that's not coach speak. That's just a young football team that has not had a lot of success. Um, that really just needs to focus on this week. So who do you hear from as a coach of LSU? Obviously, you've gotten uh, many years of phone calls from fan bases up in Notre Dame with big wins that you've come up with. How is it different down in, with LSU? Who do you hear from after a dub like that? Oh, a lot of the former players. Uh, Andrew Whitworth has been around. Uh-huh. Marcus Spears, you know, Booger McFarland. Uh, those guys – Stay in touch, and, and uh, Ryan Clark. Um, those guys are great supporters of LSU. So you know they they give you the texts and and um, you know remind you of you know how you got here. And so they're they've just been good sources early on in, in my time here to to be reminded about you know the things here at, at LSU. So they they've been a really good support. And then uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you because again this is again I, I know it's totally out of your lane but I'm going to ask it anyway because it is and I, I kind of made a a, a a cheeky reference to start our interview about what is happening in Indianapolis in the professional level. I mean this is the coaching profession and yeah. somebody who 
um, despite how amazing a human and great uh, history he does have with the franchise as being a player. And Jeff Shatterday is gets a plum opportunity, and there's a lot of other coaches that um, that would love that chance and don't get it. Well, what what would you say uh, about this uh, as some a member of the coaching community when you hear this story happening? Well, I, I'm not as concerned about how other coaches feel about it. It's the guys in in the building, right? I mean, um, the the ownership, the the general manager, those that are in the building. Hopefully, that they're involved in the decision making in terms of bringing. You know, I, I think Jeff is. You know, I don't know him, but mm-hmm. he seems like a, a, a terrific guy. He is. Uh, but this isn't about terrific guys this is about you know hiring the best qualified person um in in a professional franchise so um again i hope the best but this is about the guys in that building the coaches the support staff and the players and giving them the best chance to succeed and so if those that are in the building that make the decision feel like he's the best person for that job god bless them um but if he's not and they they hired him because his last name is in the ring of honor then 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 that's not a good thing either so um you would you would trust that the people that are making the decision in that building know what's best for their franchise and and you move on and last thing for you would you in using any adjective to describe the the victory that you just coached your team to and the setting and the moment and the 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 call you made and then watching your kids uh, execute it and just being in that crazy spot and everybody going crazy and on the field, would a, a proper term for that for you be validating? Would you use that word for you, Coach Kelly? Well, I think it was, for me, it was all the things that I was looking for in, 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 in taking the job at LSU. It was the the iconic setting. It was, you know, playing the best of the best in Nick Saban in Alabama. Um, yeah, I think it's icing on the cake that we won, but it's the way we played and it's the way our football team has developed. Um, the win is probably third or fourth on the list. It was, it was all the other things that went to it. It's like, it's like a great suspense movie and you're just sitting on the edge of your seat and you can't take your eyes away from it. That's what, that's what we had in that stadium, and that, that's my job is to, is to put a team on the field that is that compelling to watch that you want to go watch them play, win or lose. And, of course, winning's better than losing, but that's what we're able to do. And so I think that's what was validated more than any win. Coach, I appreciate the time. Congrats on the dub. Thanks, let's, uh, let's stay in touch, and, um, and, and I appreciate the time, as always, truly. All right. Thanks, buddy. Thanks a lot. Right Take back care. at you. That's Coach Brian Kelly of LSU Football.